When people say, I want to be like Mike, as an adult, as an entrepreneur, I take that with deep reverence. Am I really willing to step up to be like Mike? I want to walk into a room with respect. That's being like Mike. I mean, people call him Black Jesus. All right, so just like many of you, I've been watching the Last Dance documentary. Unbelievable, being a kid that grew up in the 80s, the 90s. I mean, I think I was absolutely blessed as a kid growing up watching sports in Chicago. I mean, we had the 85 Bears, and then we had the, obviously Michael Jordan being drafted into the, in the NBA, and to see his climb and his rise, uh, to see what they did in the 90s. I listened to the military in the 90s, to see his championship overseas via VCR tapes, remember those things? But to be able to see the Last Dance documentary, not necessarily as a fan as I was growing up, but to see the Last Dance documentary now as a grown man, as an adult, as a father, as an entrepreneur, it's completely different now, completely different perspective. I was just sharing with my cousins, you know, we were dressing up on, in, in, in Bulls gears on Sunday nights just to watch the documentary, kind of go back in that mode when we were kids. But it's completely different to me right now. And I was reminded of one of my favorite songs from the Like Mike uh, 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 era, which is, it's the times I dream. That he is me. me. Got to see that's how I dream to be. But here's the thing. Here's the reality, though. You like Mike in what he's accomplished. You like Mike. You love Mike in his championships. You like Mike. You love Mike in what he's been able to do in the NBA, and for the most part, in our lives throughout the world. But here's the reality. You don't want to be like Mike. No, you don't. You don't want to be like Mike. You know why? Because being like Mike takes absolute sacrifice. You saw it in the documentary. It says leadership has sacrifice. Winning has sacrifice. So I'm translating this to business. I'm translating this to what I want to accomplish in my career, in my, in my industry, because I feel like I want to be like, you know, I'm inspired. Do I really want to be like Mike? This, this, this really challenges me. Do I want to be one of the greatest, the greatest GOAT of all time in my industry? Wow, what a profound statement. People just say, you know what, I just want to have, have, be good enough. I just want to be able to have a shoe deal or I just want to be able to win a championship. But to be known in my industry, my sport, my company, my ministry, my job, my career, do I really want to be like my, and have that type of standard? And there's so many different ways that people, as you am seeing now, liked Mike, loved Mike, but a lot of people didn't like Mike. So the question you got to ask yourself is, do I really want to be like Mike? Ask yourself, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of being like Mike? What's the benefit of being a person like that, pivotal, not only for the Jordan family, but pivotal in NBA? I mean, at the time, I believe when, when um, Jerry Reinsdorf purchased uh, the Bulls, they bought it for like $16 million. It was part of an investor group. They bought it for like $16 million. That's it. And today, fast forward, I believe it's the fourth most uh, 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 valuable franchise in the NBA, I think around $3.2 billion. And just to think what Michael did, I mean, think about this real quick. You're willing to put that much sacrifice. You have an addiction, not to gambling, but you had addiction to winning competition where you're willing to put everything you have on the line at all costs to make sure that you win the game, to win the championships, to win whatever it is that you put your mind towards. And just to think like Mike, I want to be like Mike. Do you really want to be like Mike? And by the way, for those of you that's out there, you want to be like Mike, challenge yourself to the standard. I'm looking, I'm looking at what I've been doing for the last 20 years. I've never been raised to the standard because I've never had a Michael Jordan-esque type of figure until I started hanging around my mentor, Patrick Bed David. He says, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? He said, I want to be one of the greatest that's been ever known to do this, to be able to, be able to build a business inside the insurance industry. I want to be one of the best that's ever been known. I want to walk into a room and people know I walked into a room in my field, in my career, in my industry, that I come into that room with respect, that people stamp a little straighter, the conversation changed a little bit. Why? Because I walked into that room. If I could be like Michael Jordan. Right? That's being like Mike. That there's an automatic command and respect because you're willing to put it on the leaders board. You're willing to put it in an area of competition. You're willing to put it on the board. And so that's what Mike did. I mean, he walked in. You saw the command and respect that he had. I mean, people call him Black Jesus. I remember when Kobe Bryant uh, came to our convention and he was confronted. I uh, was asked by our, our CEO, Patch, who was interviewing him on stage. and said, what, what was it like to play, uh, play uh, against Michael Jordan? I remember Kobe saying, who? And people, the other players were referencing to Michael Jordan as Black Jesus. And Kobe was like, what? Black Jesus? I'm, I'm, I'm willing to come after him. I tell you, like when, we, when I was in high school, um, and 
I used to work out with the 76ers. I used to ask him, you know, what's it like to guard Mike? He go, Mike? You mean black Jesus? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> black who? Oh, we call him black Jesus. Or you can call him black cat. I'm like, I'm going to call him fucking Mike. That's his fucking name. Because he wanted to be like Mike. Kobe, Kobe wanted to be like Mike. But think about how many people Michael blessed, not just the franchise, not just the NBA, but the fellow players around him. I mean, not only was Scottie Pippen Scottie Pippen, not only was Horace Grant Horace Grant, not only was Dennis Robin Dennis Robin, but some B, C, even D level players on that team got a lot of notoriety. Why? Because they got rings on their fingers. Because they won championships with Michael Jordan. I mean, who is Steve Kerr? Who is John Paxson? Who is Bill Wennington? Who is Luke Longley, right? Some players drafted from across the country, right? The guys that were being drafted to the Bulls were made better because they were around Michael Jordan. He pushed you to make sure that you compete at the highest level, that he's going to drag you across. But he wanted to make sure that if you're on his team, you got you have a mindset that you're going to win a championship. Because that's what he wanted to do. I mean, Michael had different ways of, to prove himself to you. That he was delivering the blow to you. That he wanted to make sure that the practice was just as intense or more intense as it was in the game. Because if you're intense in practice, then the game's going to be easier. And some of these players that said, listen, the game's a whole lot easier than in practice. Michael always pushed us. So do you really want to be like Mike? Are you willing to push people around you? Are you willing to push the people that you love and care about that you want to raise everybody's standards? You want to push your mom and dad? Do you want to push your siblings? Do you want to push your cousins? Do you? Well, that's what Mike did. He pushed all his siblings, everybody. Come, you heard it in the family. His, his brother Larry, right? His sister, all, always competing. His, his sister beat his, uh, beat, uh, graduated early just so she can go to University of North Carolina with Mike. And then she graduated college before Mike. So it's all about competition. The older brother Larry always competing. His oldest brother served in the army for 32 years. So it's a competitive family. Do you really want to be like Mike? Do you really want to raise the standards? Do you really want to potentially alienate a lot of people that are willing to be at that standard? How many people are blessed because you decide to push forward? How many people are going to be blessed because you decide to say, you know what? I'm going to be the first generation to do this. I'm going to be a first generation millionaire. I'm going to be a first generation championship. I'm going to be the first generation person in my family to establish something for our family line to do something unique and special. Are you willing to do that? That's going to be like Mike then. But also with great desire for winning, there's also a great amount of sacrifice and time invested into doing this. I think about the, the, the sacrifice that Michael made to his body to keep himself in shape. I mean, <laughs> he was smoking cigars all the time, wasn't he? And his doctor, he's smoking cigars all the time. Every, every time he had to chill and hang out and kind of study and get ready for the game, boom, cigar, one cigar, two cigars. I saw a scene where there was a cigar in a cup while he was smoking another one. I'm not sure if it was his or somebody else's, but Mike loved cigars. And I'm thinking too, too as well, he, the amount of pressure and discipline and sacrifice put his body. His personal trainer, Tim Grover, we, we had him come to our convention a couple years ago to speak of what is to train Mike to have the relentless type of mindset as patterned after his book called Relentless. Tim Grover came and he, he dropped bombs and nuggets on our stage to let people know this is what a closer does, this is what a cooler does, but dude, this is what a cleaner does. He just wants to clean, clean the history books. And so let me clean off all these names Boom, Michael Jordan. Boom, Patrick Bet David. Boom, your name. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to be like Mike? Think about think about the stress and pressure you put in your company. The stress and pressure that you can put on those that work with you, for you as independent contractors, carriers, vendors, suppliers. Are willing? Are you willing to push them? Are you willing to push them to greatness? And by the way, you do so. What's the benefit? The benefit is they're blessed too as well. Because you grow your company, you become one of the greatest in your field and one of the greatest in your industry. Guess what? They're gonna get more orders from you. But think about that. Are you willing to really sacrifice? And I say be a jerk about things. You may apply your things differently because look at Tom Brady, LeBron James. He approaches their players with love and grace. Not like Mike did. Mike had a certain way. He was a jerk to you. He was an a-hole to you. We're having a cigar with Michael Jordan at his grand opening right here. My wife and I had an opportunity to go to his grand opening, his new restaurant here in Oak Brook. And for an hour and a half, surrounded by Chicago Bears, Ahmad Rashad, Fred Whitfield, his attorney, at uh, his friend at uh, the Charlotte Hornets, we're having a cigar. Hour and a half conversation. <laughs> My wife never smoked cigars before in her life. She smoked three cigars that night <laughs> just to make sure that she wouldn't leave the presence of Michael Jordan. But Michael, even to this day, was pushing buttons. He was pushing people. He was making sure people got better, right? He wanted to raise your game. Even life after basketball, he's just, he's just a competitor. He wants to make sure that people around you were better. I remember talking backstage to Kobe Bryant. It was the same thing Kobe was. He's like, listen, the, the reason why I love doing business with you guys, the reason why I can speak on you guys' stage with confidence because I, I only do business with one type of people. I said, what's that, Kobe? He says, obsessors. I only do business with obsessors. He says, really, Kobe? So how can you tell people are obsessors? I mean, what quantifies an obsessor? Because, dude, I can smell it on him. Bro, I got this. I'm going to rock your stage. He walks up to your stage, looks up at the crowd, looks up, looks around to our company. Looks right in Vegas, he goes, yep, this is a company. This is a company. This is a company of obsessors. This is this is a company. This is a company. This is a company. <laughs> I know.
And you think how Kobe patterned his game after Mike. How he looked up at Mike as an older brother. How Mike uh, uh, looked with Kobe as a, somebody he's mentoring as a little brother. To see how passionate he was during, during his Kobe's uh, memorial at the LA Staples Center. Just to see Michael just uh, in tears, just memorializing Kobe's life and what he meant to him. But when people say, I want to be like Mike, as an adult now, as an entrepreneur I grew up, I take that with deep reverence. I take that really, am I really willing to step up to be like Mike? Because if I do, I have to say that you got to be a jerk about it. You got to probably find your own way because there's a different way I talk to my family. There's a different way I talk to my uh, clients. There's a different way I talk to people that we recruit and hire and train. There's a different type of people that we talk to our suppliers and vendors and people that work for us and all these different ways. But here's the thing, the way I'm going to look at things, and you know, maybe the things that you might want to consider too as well, is are you still willing to put the pressure on people around you to get better? Are there just gonna be somebody that's just gonna kind of casually do business with you? Or are you there to build the, the best, most powerful brand in your industry, the most powerful company that the in your industry has ever known, are willing to go down in the history books like that? Then when a conversation comes up about what somebody does 20, 30 years from now, they're always comparing them to you. Are you willing to be like Mike? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm interested and excited to hear what you've got to say. And I'm excited to see what this rest of this documentary has to offer because man, I'm taking notes, man. I'm taking so, so many nuggets. All right, just let me know what your biggest takeaway so far so in terms of watching this documentary and the last dance documentary. What are you taking away? And I hope and encourage you now that many of you that grew up in the 80s and 90s that you're not looking at this as a fan anymore. Watch it for the first time, second time, but I want you to go back dissect it and see how these values and principles that Michael Jordan had put to place can mean in your life, in your career, the way you run your family, the way you run your business, the way you run your, your ministry, the way you run your profit, not a, a nonprofit organization. Be like Mike, may go out there and make a difference, build the legacy and be the greatest of all time. Are you willing to do that? We'll see. Put in the comment section below. Let them know what you're willing to commit to a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. You put in a comment section, you can put, you're basically putting in a time capsule because we're all gonna look back at this because here's what Facebook does really well. Facebook memories. Here's what YouTube does really well. It kind of reminds you what some of your greatest videos have ever been in the history of a YouTube channel. I'm gonna look for some of these names. I'm gonna be looking for you to make a bold declaration. I wanna be like Mike and date it. And we'll see what happens as you put the effort and the time into doing so. For those of you that are already the Michael Jordans of your industry, <laughs> I'm coming after you. That being said, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.